Today's topic is the CRM. So for those of you that are just getting their license, uh, this is what you have to look forward to. Um, and I'm a huge fan of the CRM because it takes off of your plate the task of always trying to stay in touch with your clients. It's an automated way of really engaging your funded clients. So I'm going to just say that as a kind of as a starter. The CRM can do way more than I'm going to show you today. You can design your own campaigns. You can have anything go out that you want. But today we're just going to focus on the pre-made stuff. So you can basically turn it on. So again, there's probably going to be questions about how do I do this and how do you do that? Well, we probably do that another session down the road. Today we're just going to focus on the pre-made campaigns that we've always had in place. They're just now in velocity. It used to be the same campaigns, if you remember, in that old program we had called Client Manager. Um, if you ever were engaged in the previous CRM called Client Manager, the campaigns in there are virtually identical to what I'm going to show you today. Um, and I love this because in my travels, I know that it's tough to always be engaging your existing clients because you're always working on your new deals and trying to get new clients. And, and it's pretty simple for clients to, you know, kind of go a couple of years without hearing from us because we're busy. So this automates that and it just helps you be kept top of mind you your funded clients and again i keep talking about funded clients are going to hear from you two to four times every year until they're mortgage free and you do nothing so that is a huge needed asset in our industry focus on getting new deals we fund it and they're easy to forget sort of right well this just lets that be automated so they're going to hear from you so we're going to show you when i turn on my screen here we're going to show you where the crm is found within velocity and we're really only going to do two things we got to create the templates, which is basically they're already made. You just want to maybe tweak them to look more like you or your style or your verbiage. At very least, you're just going to upload your headshot. So at least they see your face. But I'm going to give you some tips on how you think you should tweak them a bit. So we're just going to show you how to tweak the, the, the templates super easy. And then you attach them to the respective campaign and turn it on. So today's task, maybe it's going to give you guys, I don't know, two, three hours of work. But then once you turn it on, you're done for the most part. So invest the time now. And it's very, very little time invested down the road. Excuse me, Greg, Greg, are these the ones that like go out automatically? Like we funded 60 days ago or 30 days ago, or y'all moved in? Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I, I use it. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. And again, they're pre-made, so you just got to turn them on. Again, paraphrasing a little bit. But just know at the back of your mind, if you've got some creative ideas and you want to have different stuff going out, you can basically make whatever you want to go out whenever you want. So, But that's something down the road. Um, and I'll also say this is a little segue as well. For those of you that had all your – used to be on expert or maybe are still on expert, all your expert data is in velocity. So – you can push your expert data that is in velocity into the same CRM. That's I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit at the end if we have time. But for now, I just want to focus on the concept of this is how you set up your CRM. This is how you turn it on. So it'll automatically speak to your velocity funded deals. But then the next step will be let's take all your historical deals, expert deals, and make sure that the CRM speaks to those as well. Um, but we'll do that at the end because that's the kind of admin part that's not as fun. But for the newer people who've only ever been on Velocity, then this is going to be that much easier because all your data, if you start a deal in Velocity and fund it in Velocity, it's automatically going to speak to the CRM. There's no historical stuff you got to mess around with. So we're going to cover a lot, and I really want to try to do this in like half an hour. It's really easy. Um, but it's easy for me to show you how to do it. Then you got to go and go ahead and do it. <laughs> which probably are gonna spark some questions. So as you guys all know, Pete's recording this, so you can refer back to it, but there's loads of pre-recorded videos of this exact same topic already in the intranet. So you can go there and we host live webinars every month as well. So there's help everywhere. So let's do this, gonna share my screen and we are gonna do the Velocity CRM. Okay, everyone knows where I am, right? This is the Velocity home screen. And last session I was here, we focused on the dashboard. Dashboard is on the side here, right? And just a quick recap, we focused on the dashboard last week to really set the stage for this CRM because you, all your files have statuses, but the CRM doesn't look at anything until it's 
here, funded. So that's why it's important that you are on top of your statuses like we talked about last session. So all your files are at least here or greater. Greater meaning that your payment commission showed up and it's now complete. But if your files aren't, if it's a funded file and you still have it stuck in waiting to close or accepted status, the CRM won't even look at it. So again, make sure that your all your files that are funded are status funded or complete, which is the next stage, okay? So to fire up the CRM, it's simply right there, right on the side menu, Velocity CRM. Click on that and it opens up your CRM. Here it is, it's pretty easy. The CRM really only has three things to worry about. And I alluded to just two. We're gonna design templates, which is really just dragging and dropping things. We're gonna attach them to the respective campaigns. So like Deb said, 60 days after the closing date, something's gonna go out, the mortgage anniversary, something's gonna go out. These are all the pre-made campaigns. So step one, we're gonna build the templates. Step two, attach them to the campaigns and then you turn them on. And then step three is this right here. Nothing technically goes to the client until you authorize it in the sense that right now, the initial phase one of the CRM is it goes to you first, just to make sure that, yep, that's exactly right. I want it to go out and then you release it. So even though this is automated, it is built to go to you first and then you decide to release it. I am gonna show you that you can not have that happen. You can just go out, have it go out directly. So there's no stopping to you first. But I think you'll agree with me that having it come to you first is a good thing because if it goes to you first, A, it's gonna remind you of things. So before they get their renewal email that the mortgage is renewing, you get it. So now you have a task. You just been reminded that someone's renewal is coming up or maybe the birthday goes to you first because you wanna do a phone call as well. But more so, when a campaign goes to you first, it's really just making sure that it's correct. Hey, this didn't, this isn't correct because he paid out of his mortgage two months ago, so it doesn't really exist anymore. So it's always good to be a gatekeeper before things officially go out. Or there's those clients that are just creeps and you just don't want to ever talk to them again. So you can say, okay, you know what? That guy hates me or I hate him. I don't want him to get any more communication. So you can turn it off before it goes to that person. So this is actually daily... Greg, we just did that because there was a guy who had emailed me and he was talking about a chip mortgage and he said he would never work with a chip mortgage because they have a gay figure skater as their spokesperson. So I totally cut off all communication with him. As you know, my youngest son is gay. Um, it took me a really a lot of strength not to reply to that email, but I didn't. And that so, happens. Deal so it's perfect. It's perfect that they come to you so that you could turn off anything that you want. Yeah, great point. So again, I'm going to show you that. So that's the three steps. Build the templates, turn on the campaigns, and then monitor it daily. But again, if you are comfortable that you just want things to go out, you can have this avoided. Can I tell so, you one more interesting point, Greg? Yeah. When you click on that CRM link within the velocity screen. Mm -hmm. It takes you completely out of velocity. So for any of you guys that are going through this, you almost, you have to start up a new velocity screen if you want to stay within velocity because you can't kind of go back. You, here's what you do to his point. So I'm in the home screen. I could be in a deal, whatever. And if I click on velocity CRM to Pete's point, it kind of closes off the application side of velocity. And now you're in the CRM only. Exactly. So what I do is instead of just clicking on the velocity CRM, I right click on it and then I can open it in a new tab. You can see my screen here, I got a tab open for the CRM, but my velocity is still open so I can still work on ideal or if a call comes in. So that's how velocity works. If you wanna do something, but keep your existing screen active, just right click on it. So right click the velocity, open it in a new tab, and then you can have velocity open in one and then the CRM in the other. Good point. It's just one little curiosity that I've noticed. And I know people will hit it and they'll be like, damn it, I want to get back. So just wanted to make that a point. Good point. Okay. So um, yes, I just said step one is to build the campaigns, but I actually want to show you the campaigns first, just to kind of get your head thinking as to what we're going to vote to do. So I'll come back to how I'm going to get into these campaigns in a second, but let me just dive there right now to kind of give you a teaser as to what we're about to do. So I'm going to click on campaigns. 
and then create a campaign. Again, I'll, I'll do this again, but here we are. We have a whole bunch of pre-built campaigns. So they're basically just drop in your headshot and turn them on. Um, so the campaigns that I'm gonna focus on, and this is just my experience, my personal preference and what I've seen work out there is just the ones that are birthdays, anniversaries, maturity, and closing. So you'll see some other ones that I'm not going to touch on today, but it's the exact same concept if you want to keep on going. But I just want to focus on your funded deals. And here's how it would work. You fund a mortgage, and then things start going out under the closing campaigns. And again, I'm going to go into this in a bit more depth. But you fund a mortgage, an email goes out and thanks them. An email goes out and asks for a Google review. An email goes out and says, hey, how did your first payment go? So it's just kind of really good customer service touch points after you close a mortgage. And then after the closing campaigns go out, they probably have a birthday somewhere in there. They get a birthday message from you each and every year. And quick little pause, this birthday goes out to everyone, whereas the rest of them go out to your funded clients. But if you have declined clients or just leads or someone's just in a pre-approval status, Every single person in Velocity will get a birthday message from you regardless of what happened with that transaction. As long as you have their email and birth date, they're going to get a birthday message from you. So closing campaigns, love, 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 happy birthday. And then every year on their mortgage anniversary, you're going to send them a reminder, happy mortgage anniversary. Um, there's some value to that. And then you get close to the maturity date. Things are going to start to go on out to remind them that a maturity date is coming up. And then you renew them, and then this whole cycle starts over again. So as soon as you fund a mortgage, they're going to get, and again, you'll see this in a second, two emails in the closing campaign, then a birthday, and then their mortgage anniversary. So the first year, they're going to hear from you four times. And then after that first year, they get a birthday and a mortgage anniversary. A birthday, mortgage anniversary. And so until the final term, they get two or three maturity or renewal campaigns plus the birthday. So that's why I said four e emails from you in the first year, four on the last year, and then two every year in between. And these aren't marketing emails. These aren't asking for more business emails. These are just strictly customer service. I'm here for you if you need me emails, but there is marketing behind the scenes, but it's not gonna annoy them. It's not gonna, they're not gonna unsubscribe even though they can. They're just milestone reminders. So when you understand this cycle, let them know this. Like when you sign the commitment, let them know that they're gonna see emails from you every mortgage anniversary, every renewal, so they can expect your great customer services coming. Uh, and then when those things do come up, they're like, oh my gosh, he was right. He said he was gonna email me and here they are. So let them know it's coming. They'll really think your service is awesome because it is. So there's the campaigns that we're gonna focus on. Closing, anniversaries, maturity or renewal, and then renew them and they starts over again, okay? And just to kind of show you one more thing before we dive into the arts and craft of today, the templates, and again, don't too worry about this just too yet. I just wanna show you though, but these how these campaigns are pre-made and back to my concept of that dashboard, how you have to have the right status level. If I was to go into one of the campaigns, just wanna show you, every campaign is built with this rule that the deal status must be at least in funded status or greater, and it must be an approval. So these won't speak to pre-approvals except for the birthday. So as long as it's in funded status and it was coded as an approval, the CRM will see it. So that's why the status session last week or two weeks ago was super important, okay? So, Let's now go and build the respective templates that we're going to attach to all these campaigns. And if you guys are making notes or just for the sake of the recording, there is going to be nine templates that you're going to be making according to my suggestions. Seems like a lot, but it won't take you long. Seven days after closing, you're going to thank them and ask for a Google review. There's number one. 60 days after closing, you're going to just check in because their payment, first payment pulled. How did it go? There's number two. Birthday, number three, mortgage anniversaries, one year, two year, three year, four year, and then the renewals, eight or nine of them. So I, my 
program or my suggestion is we're going to build nine templates. I'll build three or four of you with you now and you will go build the rest. And then we take those nine templates and attach it to nine campaigns and turn it on. Seems like a lot, but it's easy. So let's go into the templates. So starting from the beginning, you're in Velocity, right click on Velocity CRM and open it up in a new tab to P's beat. And then you're into the CRM and then simply go right to templates. Templates. And I got a whole mess of templates that I've just been making for examples like I do with you guys today. He mentioned this last time, you can delete them if you want. But anyways, okay. templates. And then we're just gonna always hit the purple button to create a new email template, okay? And then it opens up a whole bunch of email pre-made templates. And network themes is where you wanna go because these are all designed for DLC network. So templates, create a template and go to network themes. And you'll see a library of a whole bunch of pre-made templates. And they're pretty easy to figure what they are because <laughs> Names right there. So we're going to turn on a birthday campaign so you can decide which birthday template you like better. I like the looks of this one, so you, we're going to use this one or that one. Um, there is the anniversaries. There is the renewals. So every campaign's name has a respective template to go with it. Just pay attention that there's English EN here, and some of them are French, but you'll figure that out as soon as you open it up. So I'm gonna start with the easiest one, birthday. Again, every single person that you take an application from, obviously your, their birthday is important, but don't forget to get everyone's emails. And I still kind of blows me away that so many agents out there work on files and never get their email. Every single person that you're, is on your application, get all their emails. Husband, wife, mom, dad, co-signers, don't just get the primary's email, get everyone's emails. True story. What if you, what if I, Greg, have the wife's email and so the wife's getting a birthday message for me every year, but the husband never does. I'll probably have a jealous husband on my hand eventually, right? So just make sure you get everyone's email so everyone gets your stuff. So birthdays, easiest one. I'm going to pick this one. So far, so good, guys. And I can just click on the name or just click on the little pencil here. So I'm going to open up the template. Let's give it a name. So again, I'll call this White House Demo B-Day. Okay, so it's just gonna open up the template. And when the template opens up, it's a split screen. One side of the screen is what we're gonna work on and the other side of the screen are the tools that we can use to work on it. So split screen, this is the template. And for us to do some work on this template, like maybe customize it a bit, we use the tools on the left here. Pretty simple. But going through the template, you can see just by me putting my mouse on it, it's broken into sections. So maybe you don't like this banner, but you like everything else. You can edit the banner. You can edit who's gonna get it. You can edit the verbiage. You can edit your headshot, your contact information. So pretty straightforward, right? Put your mouse on a section, you'll see it's in sections. We're going to edit each and every section. So when you click on a section that you want to edit, if you do, that's when the right side opens up. So this is how a birthday template looks like. They're going to see a great banner. It's going to address them by the recipient's first name. This is a merge field. Obviously, that's not how they look at it when they see it. It'll pull in their name. Anything in these squiggly brackets is a merge field. So it'll pull in their first name. This is the content, but does the content sound like you? You should always make sure all your marketing sounds like you. Your clients know you. That doesn't sound like Judy. Like Donville, Greg would never say this. A little birdie told me it's your birthday ever. And probably my clients and friends know that. So you probably wanna do some rewriting to make sure it sounds like you and the verbiage that you wanna use. More merge fields, sincerely, Greg Donville. Deb White, Brian Legner, whatever. And then it's got all your contact information. So everything in the CRM has your email signature built into it. That's clickable. So they could click on your phone number and it starts to dial you, click on your email, et cetera. But as you can see, 
there's no headshot in here. So that's one thing you have to do. At very least, at very least, all you're doing is dragging in your headshot and you can call it good. But I'm gonna probably make you give you some suggestions to do some more stuff. But at very least, every template is blank and it would kind of look silly if this goes out with a gray shadow. So you're gonna be at very least dragging in your headshot. So I'm gonna start with that, the very least. Well, I'm happy with this template. It looks great. I'm content with my clients getting this just the way it looks. So all I gotta do then is put in my headshot. So if I wanted to put in my headshot here, then you just click on the part that you wanna edit and keep your eyes on this left here when I click on something. So if I click on it, bang. It now opens up the editing tools of this section that I'm in. And for a headshot, I could hyperlink it. So you click on it and it goes to my website. I'm just making this up. You can change the sizes of it. You have some editing control of your headshot, but for the most part, all you're doing is clicking on the headshot space and you can see right here, this little circle thingy, change the image. I wanna swap out this gray avatar with your headshot. So you click on it. And then for the very first time, you gotta load it into the library. So I can just click this, click here or drag in your headshot that's saved to your computer. And once you do it once, it'll be part of your gallery that's always in there. So you don't have to keep doing it. As you can see, there's some of my examples I've done from before. So I've clicked on the birthday template. I wanna slam in my headshot at the very least. You click on it and drag in your headshot. So I'm just gonna to go to my computer and grab anyone's headshot. Make sure I have some in here. Uh, do, 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 desktop. So I'm gonna grab someone's headshot. I'm sure I got one in here. There, Satinder's headshot, whatever. Come on, you can do it. Oh, you know what? That might be a massive, see here? No more than two megabytes. And I'm pretty sure that one I just grabbed is massive. So let me grab another one. When you get professional headshots done, usually the quality is so high resolution that it's a massive headshot. So let me try this one. Greg, can you put that on your list of like potential things to talk to um, the development team about? Because I know this is the thing that always kills me is that I have headshots that are much bigger than two. Yeah, I can absolutely do that. In fact, it's already on the list, man. But so you, there you go. So I clicked on the gray shadow. I clicked this change image and then I went to my computer and dragged in my headshot. That's simple. And so now if this is all you wanted to do, you would just save the template and move on to your next one. But let's go a bit further and please just yell out if you want me to stop and do something else. But now let's go through everything and I'm gonna be silly here, but let's say I wanted to, I didn't like this banner. So I had the graphic design team at head office design a new one, whatever. Get the, get the asset made, save it to your computer, and then you can just click on it. And same as the headshot, change your image and go to your computer and grab one. So change my image. And I'm just gonna grab one that I already have in here. Okay, so I've now I turned this into a happy Halloween, birthday, whatever. Next thing. Well, if I was to click on this section here, because it's a text section, you'll see these now populate. This is just like a Word document, Microsoft Word. When you click on a section that has verbiage, you can now change the font size, bold it, put bullet points in, do, do whatever you want. But this thing here is called a merge tag. So maybe you wanna say, hi, Greg Donville, not just hi, Greg, which I don't think you should. But anyways, if you wanna add merge tags, they're right here, merge tags. Agent's name, recipient's name, bore's name. So maybe you want to slam in your last name. So now it's going to say, hi, whoever my client is, Bob Smith. If you don't want that merge tag there, you just simply delete it. And then down here, again, verbiage. Click on it, and then you can do nothing and just change it. So I would never say this. This is something that this is people that know me. Hey, dude. Have an awesome B day and party party. That's how Greg talks. So you can just basically change the verbiage the way you want it to change it. 
You can bold things if you want, just like a Word document. Now, one little, I call that a design flaw. If it already has all my contact information, my headshot, all my name, well, it's got it there again. So it's going to say, sincerely, Greg Donville. And then right below it, it's going to say, Greg Donville again. So you could maybe delete this. So it just says, sincerely. And then the next thing they see is your email signature. Or maybe you just go, sincerely, Greg, with a formal email signature underneath it. So don't be afraid to delete or add these merge tags. No, nope, I want my full name in there. Okay, put the cursor where you want it, merge tags, and that would be my agent last name. But I will say this again, always rewrite the verbiage to make it sound like you. Everyone has different styles and flares and what you wanna say. So I'm gonna give you some suggestions on the, ten the templates I'm gonna show you. And then you go through your name. Yeah, that's good. So it's gonna say Greg Donville. It's gonna say your franchise name, DLC Whitehouse, your phone number, your fax number, your email. Fax number? Who's got fax numbers nowadays? If you don't have a fax number, you can just delete it. So you see my mouse is on the fax number here. And then there's a little menu beside it. I go to the right here, those three dots. And I can trash the fax number if I don't have one. And that's it. Again, if I wanted to swap out this banner with your own banner, I could do so. Click on it, swap it out, and grab the banner that you want to use, which again, maybe you don't want to do too much, but I'm just being silly here, but you could just to demonstrate the point. If you don't like something, click on it and swap it out with what you want. So I've kind of turned this birthday template into a Halloween message, but you get the idea. And then the last thing is this. You'll see social media icons on every template. These, by default, will all send the client to DLC's social media sites. So if you're not active on social media, go ahead and leave it. If you are active on social media, you or you just want to get these rid of all together, you trash it. So delete the ones that are there, because those, by default, point to DLC's social media. So I would trash it. But then back up here, you have blocks, an image block, which is what this is, a text block, all sorts of blocks. There's a social media block here. So I would delete the one that was there already and then grab this social media one and put it in its place. And then now these will point to yours. And I'm going to go show you where you would put your handles in. So this is the only kind of clunky thing. Sometimes I don't even talk about it. But again, the social media handles by default point to Dominion. Trash it if you want to use your own and drag in the social block. Just drag it in. And so you can see when you drag in anything, you want it here, drop here, drop here, drop here. So if I wanted to maybe add another banner at the top here, I could just grab the banner block and drag it in there. So now I could have Happy Halloween and drop in something else. But the social media blocks, delete the original ones, drag in this social block, and then now these will all point to you. But hey, Greg, I don't have a YouTube channel. Well then, delete it. YouTube, delete. And I don't have Instagram. Well then, delete it. But I have these three. And then to have these go to your social media handle, right there. Just plug in the handle that you want to use. So you type in Deb White, whatever, or Pete, et cetera. So that's the first one. I'm going to do this a few more times just to make sure you guys got it all. But it's just a matter of clicking on a section, making any edits dragging in things or typing things. And then when you're done, you save it. You could preview it. See this little purple preview? Before you save it, how does it look? Hit preview, and that's how the recipient would get it. Cool, I like that. So then you save it. Done. So we just made the birthday template. We still have to go attach it to the campaign and turn it on, but step one is to make all your templates. So let's do another one.
exact same thing. Templates, create a template. This time, oh yeah, and then network themes. And now let's go to the anniversaries. So there's a one year anniversary, two year, three year, four year. There is no five because normally five is the renewal time. So when it hits the fifth year, that's when the renewals go out instead of the anniversaries. If they're on a three year term, they'll automatically get the first and second, and then the third will become the, the renewal one. But you're gonna wanna build four. So just do the same thing four times over. So I'm gonna grab this one. Let's build my first year anniversary one. And then just to keep consistent, I'll call it White House Demo First and continue. And it is identical to what we just did. But let me give you a little bit of maybe some ideas to think about. So same thing. I'm happy with that banner or not. Just click on it and swap it out, but it's pretty good. Kate Brady, our marketing girl, made all her team made all these, so they're pretty modern. Um, again, there's a merge tag for the recipient, a little bit of verbiage, more verbiage, some pictures. So maybe you don't like this window thing. Okay, well, you can turf the window guy, right? But I always start with the most easiest. Let's make sure we drag in your headshot. So click on the headshot space and you'll see change the image. And it should be in your personal gallery there. I'll go throw mine in this time. And I don't have a fax number so I can turf that. But let's talk about verbiage. My opinion, you guys can talk about this yourselves offline, maybe share some best practices. But again, make sure it sounds like you. Um, so, hi, Bob. My, how time flies. Can you believe it's already been an entire year since you entrusted me with your mortgage? So what kind of communications would you wanna talk about on a mortgage anniversary? And again, we could have a huge debate on this, but I'll just give you some ideas and we'll move on. Every year on the mortgage anniversary, it's sure, happy mortgage anniversary, yeah, rah, 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 you're still in debt. <laughs> but really, what do we do on the mortgage anniversary? It's the invitation to touch base and see how things are going. So number one, I always say, hey, it's your annual prepayment time. Because when you gave them the commitment a year ago, you talked about the prepayment privileges. Some lenders, you can only do a lump sum once a year on the anniversary date, not all. But I would say at that time, here's your privileges that I got for you. And I'm gonna remind you every year if you wanna exercise them. So maybe one of the points that you're gonna talk about here is happy one year anniversary. If you wanna do some lump sum payments, this is the time to do it to save gobs of money on interest. Number two, hey, do you have the best rate? Maybe contact me and we'll do a free analysis to make sure that you have the best rate or not. Number three, anything new in your life? You got kids now? You got a new job? You wanna do build a new addition? Let me know. So it's really just an annual mortgage checkup. You guys have all heard that expression. This is really all these are. It's your annual mortgage checkup time, reminding you of your prepayment privileges, anything new in your life we should talk about. Because if you've got two more kids now, maybe you need some tuition money. And do you have the best rate? Call me for a free analysis. So really, you're just loving them, touching base, and inviting them to call you. You're probably not going to call them. That's what the email's for write your verbiage to give them reasons to call you. Hey, Deb, I just got your email. Thanks for the mortgage anniversary. Appreciate that. You mentioned something about best rates. Do I have the best rate? Well, you got 2.3. Yep, you got the best rate. Thank you. Click. <laughs> but if their rates maybe higher or fixed or variable, you can have a discussion about rates. But again, hey, yeah, I, I did get a new job. I'm making a bit less money or I got two new kids. So it just invokes conversations. That's how I really design the mortgage anniversary is to invoke that annual mortgage checkup. What's new? Call me. Let's talk if you want. So just type your changes if you have any. This doesn't sound like me. I'll delete that paragraph. I'll type my own stuff in and away you go. And then lastly, again, kind of clunky, but I'm going to turf the DLC social media squares and drag in my own. Right there. And then I'm going to, again, I'm not on anything, <laughs> but I'm not on YouTube. I'm not on Instagram, and then you fill in your handles. Easy, save it. 
Again, you can view it if you want, but save it. So for those who are keeping track, one birthday template, check. You're gonna do this anniversary four times over. So there's five, right? Save that. And I'll do one more easy one, then I'll do a last one that's a little bit more techie. So let's do another one. Let's do, again, templates, create a template, network themes. Let's do a maturity campaign. So there is a whole, when I get into the maturity campaigns, you'll see there's actually a whole bunch of emails ready to go. It by design, the renewal or maturity campaign is built to send the clients an email every month, starting from the six months away from maturity date. So six months away from the maturity date, they're going to get an email on month six, five, four, three, two, one. That's a lot of freaking emails. I don't think that we need to send them six. My style is I send them two. I send them one at the six month mark to say, hey, I'm gonna call you closer to the time. It's coming, do nothing, I'm just giving you a heads up. But that's the perfect time to let them know if you're six months away from maturity, the lender's probably trying to convince them to do an early renewal. So it'll come renewal, I only need to send out two. Six months before maturity, hey, I'll call you closer to the time, but don't sign Jack if the lender offers you something. Let me make that decision for you or help you. And then I send one, the second one at 90 days before maturity because I can do a rate hold for 90 days and get it all wrapped up with plenty of time. But it's as many as you want to send. So there is uh, 180, here they are, maturity, maturity, maturity. So this is what I'll start with, 190 day, which is six months and 10 days. So I'll just again call this White House uh, six month maturity or whatever you want to call it. Continue. So again, there's a whole bunch of templates for the renewals or maturity. I just my style is only two. You can do what you want. So same as before. I'm happy with that or not. 190 day reminder. We're going to talk about the verbiage, but this is new. See this merge tag? It, it tells them the closing date. Hence last session, remember how accurate the closing date needs to be because some of the templates talk to that closing date. If you're not convinced that your closing dates are accurate, then maybe delete this. Um, but really fast, headshot, swap it out. We'll throw in Nathan this time. I don't think it's very clear. Delete his fax number because I don't have fax. I'll delete the social media because I want to use my own. You can see how fast you can go once you get the hang of it, right? Delete the social medias that you don't use. Put your handles in. Okay, done, right? But let's talk about the reminder. Again, my style is this. This is the first campaign of the renewal session, and it's really geared towards heads up. We're getting close to maturity, no action needed. I'll call you close to the time and totally take care of you. But just wanted to say, you know, if the lender reaches out to you and tries to offer you an early renewal, maybe don't sign it, let me see it and I'll help you con I'll help you decide if that's the best deal or not. Nine times out of 10, it's not the best deal. You can help negotiate better rates or you move them. So that's kind of the verbiage I'd say. Back on whatever, five years ago, we had this mortgage. I'll call you closer to the time. Don't do nothing. Just look at, you know, head, heads up for my call in a few months. But if the lender calls you or offers you something, let me know about that because it's probably I can do a better job for you. Cool, right? And you're going to save it. So taking a, an existing template is pretty easy. Headshot, maybe rewrite, rewrite the verbiage, and it's good to go. Um, one template that I love is the closing templates. And this one I'm a huge fan of because we all know public facing reviews are so important. I, I say Google reviews, but it could be Facebook or LinkedIn or Yelp or whatever you use. You can have this automatically, as soon as the mortgage closed, send them an email, thank them, love them, and ask them to click and give you a five-star review. Again, I'm gonna say Google reviews, but it can be anywhere you want. So let's do that because that is so powerful that every single person you close, you get the opportunity to ask for a review. But if you know it was not the best transaction, you cannot let that, let that go out first. So this is the only one that's a little bit techie. And this is being recorded, so don't forget. 
So I'm going to grab the closing campaigns because again, this is in the close, or sorry, the closing template. And the one that I use is right here, seven day closing. But don't forget, it doesn't have to be the specific template for the campaign. You can take any template and rewrite it into whatever you want. But I, I'll use this one because I, I go after the seven day closing. Seven days after the closing date, they're going to get an email from me, thank them, love them, and ask for a review. And why seven days after? Why not one day after? Well, one day after, they're probably moving. They're busy. They're stressed. They're eating out of pizza boxes, right? Two days, three days, they're, they're still kind of busy and life's a bit of a mess. By seven days, they're settled in. Their computer's plugged back in again. They'll have time to really appreciate that email and maybe give you a review. So there is a bit of reason why we just uh, decided to have this go out seven days after closing, but you can change that to whatever you want. But I like that. If I ask for a review two months after the closing date, yeah, you probably won't get it because it's so much time has passed. But seven days, you're still in that honeymoon phase, as I call it. So let me show you how to take this template and we'll do a little bit of tweaks to it. So White House, seven day closing. Google is what I'm going to call it. We're definitely going to be longer than an, half an hour, Mike, or Mike, Pete. <laughs> okay, so exact same thing. I won't do it at all. You guys get the drill of it. Headshot, fax numbers, social media, all that's the same. But the new thing I'm going to do is this. So follow along. This is built to say, hey, refer a friend. So it's going to thank them, love them and kind of suggest, I would love you if you refer to a friend. I don't like that. What are they gonna do with this email? Does that just remind them to refer you? So my style is, I'd rather turn this into a click here and give me a Google review. So if you agree with that and you like that concept, I delete this refer a friend thingy. And I'm gonna drag in a button because I want them to click to give me a review. So I deleted the section I didn't want, or I could have left it in there, I guess, and put the button below it. But if I wanted to drag in a button, this is kind of fun, drop here, yeah, I wanted to go there. And now I actually have a button they can click. Well, at first glance, the button kind of stands out because it doesn't have the same background, it's purple, it just says button. So let's now edit this because I'm gonna talk about the verbiage in a second, but this verbiage is gonna guarantee that they click this button every single time. So I've dragged in the button, I click on it and you can see I can change the button color. Well, maybe I like purple, right? But if you don't want to change it, I'm red. I think button should be red, change it to red. I don't want it to be called a button. I want it to be called, where is it? The button label is click here for five star Google review or whatever you want. Okay, cool. And then I want, I'm sure you want, you want the background here to be the same color, right? You can see here, the background color is transparent. Well, if you want it to be the same color blue, just click on transparent and just kind of move around until you find the matching blue. Well, that doesn't match. That kind of matches, but not quite. That kind of that doesn't match. So it's a bit of a trial and error to find the matching color. Let me show you a trick. Click on the color that you want to use. So I clicked on the section above, and there is the background color that I want to match it with. Just copy that. Go back to the section and paste it in. And now I know if exactly it's matched. So if you're trying to match a new section that you dragged in, click on the color that you want to match it to. Background color is this, copy it, click on the new one and paste it in. So I've dragged in the button, I've given my button a different color, I've given my button a name and I've matched the background. So the last thing I need to do is have this button go where I want them to go. When they click on it, where is it going? That's called a hyperlink, right? You click on it and it takes you somewhere else. So if I was to click on this button, the way it reads, where should it take me? Your Google page. So you're gonna get your Google link if you have a Google page set up. Um, so you go to your Google business. And again, this is a bit techy. 
Pete can probably help you. I can help you after the fact. But I, go to your Google business page. If you, again, assuming you have one, but this could be Facebook, LinkedIn, that kind of stuff. I'll sign into my Google business page. And in your Google business page, yeah, yeah. you have a thing where you can grab your Google link. Where is it? Uh, somewhere in here. Get my reviews right there. So I've logged into my Google page. I'm grabbing my Google link and this link will take them right to my Google page. So if they click on the button, it goes right to the spot where they can click five stars and write your review. When you're asking for, for them to do something, you wanna make it as simple as possible. But again, if you wanna send them to your Facebook page, just copy your Facebook, log into your Facebook and you just copy this up here. Again, I know Pete can help you with that. So I've copied my Google link and I go back to my CRM and I'm gonna paste it right here. It says a link. So now this button will go right to my Google page. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Google page. It'll take them right here, but not even here. It'll go to the button down here. It says write a review. So basically it'll open up. So you get the review ready to go. And every mortgage you close, you'll probably get a Google review. So if you do 27 mortgages a year, you should have 27 reviews. So the only difference between this particular template, if you wanna do this, you don't have to, is we've just added a button. Everything else is the same, headshot, blah, blah, blah. Add a button and hyperlink it to where you want it to go. Now verbiage wise, you guys have seen this before, but I'll do it again and I'll just paraphrase. When you're asking someone to do something for you, you want to lay out that it's stupid easy. If you make it sound like it's a big task, they're not going to do it. Hey, thanks for the business. I would really appreciate it if you wrote me a testimonial. Write? I don't know how to write. Testimonial? What the fuck's a testimonial? Like, it just sounds daunting. So I'm just going to say, click here and give me a five-star review. Hey, Greg. Well, yep. Just to comment on that, I send out a testimonial request with every single file that I do. And yep. as you know, I write well over 200 emails uh, or 200 files a year. Yep. And if you look at my, my uh, website, you can see how many testimonials I get. So I probably get, for 10 that I send out, I probably get at least two to three back. Which is good. Like not everyone's going to do it, but that's a big success. But to help that, again, I'm going to just paraphrase. I always love them. I kind of butter them up. Hey, thanks for the business. I loved working with you. I hope you loved my service. Subliminally, I'm, I'm loving them. I'm using the word love. Um, can I ask a favor? It only takes seconds. Like let them know it takes no time at all. It takes seconds. Give me a five star review. And that's the verbiage. Can I ask a favor after you've loved them? Ask them for a favor, point out that it takes only a few seconds and ask for what you want. I am a Google review nut. Every time I go to a restaurant or anywhere, my phone gives me the opportunity to give a Google review. And I'm freaking addicted to it. I love doing it. But they don't ask me for the review. It just at, promised me to give them one. So I always give fours or threes. Very rarely do I give fives because I can always find something that I didn't love. But if the server is staring me in the face and says, hey, can I get a five-star review? Yes, I'll give her a five-star because she's looking me in the eyeballs asking for five. Ask for what you want and you'll nine times out of 10 get it. If you don't ask for a five-star review and you'd ask, you just ask for a review, you'll probably get some threes and fours. So that's my verbiage, obviously in a lot briefer form. Love you, man. Can I ask a favor? Takes two seconds. Give me a five-star review. Click below. That's all you gotta do. And then you save it. 
So this is my favorite template. It's the most techie, but it's actually pretty easy. I'll say it for the 10th time, Pete can help you. So can I, so can I. Um, but this is just automated. Just like Deb says, it takes this task off your plate. You're loving them. You're thanking them at the right time. So you don't feel rude thanking them two months later and you'll get more reviews than not. And then your Google page just fills up itself over time. So that is how to customize a template in, gosh, almost an hour. But it seems like a whole bunch of steps, but trust me, it's pretty darn easy. One thing I will say is this. Remember I always said that you drag over blocks, if you wanna drag over your social media or drag over the button. Well, you, you gotta, if you look over here, these are the, that's the starting point of the edit. If I was to click on a section, the blocks go away, and now I have the actual editing tool. How do you get those blocks back again? Just, oops, what did I do? Back, there we go, just hit the back. So I click on a banner, I do my edits, and if you wanna go back to the blocks, there they are. So you can drag in whatever you want. If you, if you want it all. And again, don't think you have to do all these things I'm saying, at very least, headshot, done. Okay, so for sake of time, because I gotta go pretty quick, I'm gonna now call this part good, trial and error, practice, there's videos, I'll help you, Pete will help you, but that's, you build your templates. One more time, guys, my suggestion is this, one birthday, two closings, a seven day and a 60 day. Seven day after closing, 60 day after closing. There's a 60 day template. What's the 60 day for? Hey, by now your first payment went through, how did it go? Please call me if you ever need anything. If the payment's wrong, it didn't pull, you wanna change your frequency, anything, call me. Don't call the bank because if you don't tell them to call you, they'll call the bank for everything they need. Next thing you know, you've lost them because now they're talking to the bank all the time. So birthday, seven day closing, thank you, love you, give a Google review. 60 day after closing, just checking in how your payment went, call me if I can ever do anything. The anniversaries, one, two, three, four. The renewals, six months, nine, three months, nine templates. So you go build all those nine templates. You've saved them all like I've been doing. Oh, what happened? That was me. Okay. <laughs> Just keep talking. I am. So now all your templates are saved. They're in your templates, White House seven day, White House maturity, White House anniversary, White House. So those are the ones we just did with you real quick. They're all now in my template library. Again, if I wanted to take a look at them, I could take a look at them. So now let's now, now that we built all the templates, you're gonna go to the campaigns. And this is super easy. I can do this in five minutes. So campaigns, create a campaign, and you're gonna use the pre-builds. So it looks like there's a whole bunch of things to do, but there's only really a couple things to do. So with the birthday campaign, let's edit it. Again, you can give it a name if you want. All you gotta do is go down to the stage. So this birthday only has one stage, the birthday. Expand it, you can see this is a little drop down. Expand it and then drop in your template. It's got no template right now. You're just gonna edit that and go grab the birthday template that we made. There it is. These are emails, so you could take a look at the subject line if you wanted to, but you don't have to. The subject line by default says happy birthday, but if you wanted to, you could change it. And the only other thing you gotta do is the approval. So for every campaign, you only have to do three things. Drop in the template, that's a must. Maybe eyeball the subject line to see if you wanna tweak it or not. And then make a decision on the approval. All the templates, or sorry, all the campaigns by default are designed to require approval, which is what I said at the very beginning. Before this birthday actually goes out, it goes to me first. I'm gonna sanction it and release it. So every day, once you turn on your campaigns, you should be going in here. The first thing you do in the morning is open up your velocity and take a look at the activities. Is there anything to release or not? And as Deb said, you can turf it or release it. 
This is the only one that I would probably make the suggestion. It's loud. Ooh, someone mute themselves. It was Deb. So this birthday. Yes, is I old. came on to tell you to wrap it up. I would probably say take this birthday and auto approve it. Because otherwise you'll have like a hundred a day with a database that's big. You have so many birthdays. I don't care. Birthdays can go out all day long. So this is the only campaign that I would suggest in the approval section, change it to auto. And then you save it. Or sorry, publish it. At the very bottom here, I hit publish. It's fuck. Sorry, it's turned on. I'm not going to turn this one on. But to save it, you just hit publish. And then get to campaigns, create a campaign. Let's go to the next one, the mortgage anniversary. There's four stages in the mortgage anniversary because there was four years. So I'm going to go to the anniversary, year number one, drop in my template that we built for the first year anniversary, which is right there. Maybe eyeball the subject line. Okay, I'm happy with that. And if you're content with leaving everything now requires approval, just leave it. So really all you're doing now is template, eyeball the subject line, and publish. And then you do the same thing. Oh, sorry, I went too fast. Go back to anniversaries. And then I'll wrap up Deb, I promise. So I there's year one, I dropped in the template. Then year two, I would drop in the respective template. Year three, year four, publish. Campaigns, create a campaign. Next one is the maturity. Now, this is what I mentioned. If I opened up the maturity campaign, it has an email to go out 180 days, 120, 90, 60, 30. I personally don't do that. So I let this one go out, the six month one. I then remove this one. I then keep that one. I remove that one and I remove that one. So my style for a renewal, I only want two going out. One's going to go to the client. And then the second one goes to the client. But don't forget, this one goes to you as well. So when I see a 90 day in my activity, I release it. But then that's my call for the day. I pick up the phone right away and call the client. Hey, it's renewal time. Told you I'd call you. You still working at Tim Hortons? You still making 50 grand a year? Awesome. Call you back in a couple of days. Done. There's a deal. And if you want some verbiage, that's exactly how I do it. What else do you need? Okay, maybe consent. But as long as you're working at the same place, you're good to go. So, hey, Pete, three months away from renewal, told you I'd call. You still working here? You still working there? Awesome. Call you in a couple of days. Click. There's your deal. So, and if you didn't, they didn't answer the phone, well, they're going to get the email. So you just remove the ones that you don't want, or you could have left them all. And lastly, the closing campaign, you will see that there is a closing campaign. Where are they? Oops, sorry, create campaigns. There's a closing campaign for refinances and a closing campaign for purchases. So you may want to you know, tweak your verbiage. One speaks to purchases. Hey, congratulations on your new home versus, hey, congratulations on your new mortgage. And that's it. The biggest task is building your templates. Once they're built, it's kind of fun. Just attach them to the respective campaign and publish them. And then just don't forget to go here every day. Maybe don't go on the weekends, take the weekends off. But on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, jump in here. Some days will be nothing. Some days there may be some the release, but this is also going to be your call. Again, if you have renewals in there, call them. Or if you're really bored or slow, if it's a call them, it could just be a call list every day. You want to call someone. Hey, it's your mortgage anniversary. Call them. So that's all we're going to do today. Like I said, there is another two more things about the CRM. We can talk about building one from scratch to have all creative ideas play around with. And we also want to get your historical data from expert and throw it in here. But I wouldn't worry about expert until you build the templates get your CRM turned on, get that doing its thing. And then we can jump on them. But Pete can invite me back and I'll show you guys how to move your historical data in here. Okay. So that's been one hour. Um, that's as fast as I could do it. That was pretty darn fast. In closing, don't forget this is recorded. Don't forget the training calendar that we have every single month. This topic's always in there. 
and in the video library of the internet, this is in there. So there is loads of help everywhere. Pete, myself, we can help you out as well. Am I okay to say that, Pete? You're pretty techie. <laughs> of course. All right, so there's CRM. And in closing, this has always been the CRM. It's just taken out a client manager, the old one, and we've dropped it in velocity, but it's the exact same science. Two to four touch points every single year until they're mortgage free. You do nothing besides build it. Thank you, Greg. I, I do think that it would be nice to have you back one more time uh, for, Please. it could be the kind of figuring out, maybe tweaking or spending a little bit more time on the campaigns. Cause I think that is kind of the next evolution of this step is going to be to really make sure that those campaigns are, are tightened up. Um, but at least this, I, I think this gives me a lot more hope in the CRM because the, the campaigns or sorry, the templates were a little quirky before, but this looks like a lot of those quirky features have now been kind of uh, ironed out. So it does look a lot better. I think, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to fiddle with it a bit more because it does look um, like there's more promise and it, just feels like this has gotten some of those really early quirks figured out. And don't forget, everything's customizable. But if you go down that rabbit hole, you'll never turn this thing on because you're going to be so busy just making everything look like step one, turn the freaking thing on. Just start talking to your people and then maybe take the time to maybe do some tweaks. So don't go to, and I say that with a bit of cheek, but I see it tons. Like three months later, someone's still trying to get things customized. Frick, dude, three months later, turn it on. So go in there put your headshot in, turn it on. And then if you want to maybe next year, make it look prettier or different, go, we'll, we'll customize it. But don't get stuck on so much presence. Just turn it on. They just want to hear from you. Okay, yeah, so Pete, we'll probably bring it back two more times because I want to really spend a, what half an hour on getting that historical data in and then we can spend a bit more, a bit more time on customization of this stuff.